we're seeing that very, very strong move by the shilling. Uh, in part, it's the moves, it's, it's, it's the action that has been taken by the central bank, including the mopping up of the excess liquidity today. But more fundamentally, it's the high in interest rates here that's driving the shilling. Can we expect more gains from here? Uh, no, no, not really. Um, the reason why it spiked today actually is um, the cash reserve ratio was taking effect today. Um, so in, in essence, um, th that reduces the, 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 the demand, or should I say the supply of the shilling in the market, mm -hmm. uh, by between 14 and 18 billion shillings, um, instantly like that. So really gains-wise, I, I think that 87 mark will be there for some time. I don't think the central bank can actually really raise rates any further. Mm -hmm. So uh, the effects of the interest rate uh, hike and the mopping up of liquidity in the market will start wearing out as we enter quarter one next year and we start seeing the shilling going back up to the 90s. Right. So let's talk about those ranges for 2012. I mean, we have seen the shilling come back all the way from uh, over 100 to the dollar. Now we're talking 87, 30, a level that most people wouldn't have anticipated when we fell to those record lows. What sort of uh, ranges do you see in 2012 for the shilling? Basically, as, as we enter 2012 and as uh, the year goes by, we basically expect the shilling to, 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 to go back to the 90s, uh, mid-90s, actually 95, 96, 97. Um, basically, what the rate hike did was um, if someone is dying of a heart attack <clears throat> and you shock them with that, uh, uh, that electric whatever thing that they use to resuscitate someone, they will wake up. But if their heart is still has a bed, in a bad state, you'll find they'll get another heart attack at another point in time. So basically, that's what they did with the rate hike. So 95, 96, 97 for most of next year. So you're expecting a depreciation from where we stand now. Now, in terms of the central bank itself uh, on the interest rate front, you said that you're not expecting them to hike rates from year on. But one has to imagine that as inflation comes down from next year, we may likely see then the reserve bank come back, sorry, the central bank coming back into the market and potentially cutting interest rates. Are we? Um, that, that, that would be the most likely of actions that they should take. Um, naturally, what the rate hike, what it has done is slowed down the economy, has uh, put a strong, strong hold on, on, on economic production and, and, and everything, basically. So to resuscitate the economy, you have to reduce rates. But the question is, uh, with the base uh, rate at 18%, uh, was it actually effective or it was mm -hmm. counter-effective? Um, in my opinion, it was more counter-effective. It has kind of slowed down the economy. Uh, it has kind of cut consumer spending, cut borrowing, cut uh, business spending, uh, has hurt sentiment, consumer and business sentiment. And so th there's a lot of things that play around in the background. So if they reduce the rate then next year, um, without actually sorting the microeconomic fundamentals that are pushing the shilling to those record lows, right. then we again will be in the same vicious cycle. So what kind of an impact then can we expect on the equities front? We have seen equities taking a beating after the, that hike in interest rates, uh, which was to be expected because p p investors were getting higher returns uh, on the fixed income front. For equities for 2012, if we anticipate then that uh, we may see a slowdown in inflation, we may see perhaps uh, some interest rate cut, what should we see on the equities front? The, market, uh, the equities market currently is in a, in, a, in a secular bearish period. So mm. we might see mini bull runs like what you maybe see today in a couple of weeks' time, um, which you normally call a bull trap, because the general trend is bearish with the mini bull runs in the middle. If you get caught up in the excitement of the mini bull runs, then you get caught in the trap. Yeah. But you see, if, if you look at the impact that these rate hikes has had and they will continue to have until maybe mid next year, you'll find there's nothing much on the bottom lines for companies, especially who already have loans that have been readjusted. Uh, guys are going to be cutting down in expenditure. That means there's less demand for goods, yeah. slowing down of production. So the stocks really looking at the dividend yields, looking at what you get on a commercial paper and commercial deposit, it's still not looking that well for them as we enter into 2012. So what's your forecast then for, for the NEC 20 for 2012? What sort of uh, gain are we likely to see? I'd like a percentage from you, please. You want actually exact percentage, <laughs> and I will not uh, put myself on the cross by giving an exact percentage, but basically we will trend sideways. The momentum and the velocity of the depreciation of uh, the Nairobi Stock Exchange uh, or the deterioration of the Nairobi Stock Exchange will slow down uh, as things are a bit stabilized. But the market will definitely not turn around and become a bull market. There are still a lot of factors that will play. 
in the market. Um, so basically, the, 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 the sign before the percentage that you want me to give you yeah. will still be negative. Indeed, I was looking for that percentage. I'm certainly hoping that uh, we'll be able to get it out of here at some point. But let's talk about the sectors then. Where would you put your money then in Kenya in 2012, given the, the issues that we've spoken about now? Okay. Um, tea is still good. Agricultural sector and the side of tea. Uh, this year was a good year of them, for them, so basically when they start reporting their full results next year, there will be some free freebies for, for investors in terms of dividends and a bit of capital gains as people try to enter into those dividends. So basically that will be a good sector to enter into. Uh, the banking sector was looking attractive, but nonetheless uh, this impact of uh, the tightening of, of liquidity by the central bank is also coming back to, to help them. They had benefited before, but now it is... Their cost of funds has gone up uh, highly, so I would not put money in the banking sector. So actually the sector that is actually uh, beneficial right now is the agricultural sector.